Welcome back to another Division 2 build guide. I'm Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and today I wanted to continue to show you a beastly squad support build designed to enhance both yours and your squad's skills. And this build is really designed for the hardest difficulties, like legendary strongholds and the legendary summit clears. But before we get into the video, if you haven't yet smashed that sub button for intensive Division content, please do so. And don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another upload notification from my YouTube channel. You can also support my channel by watching this entire video, rating and sharing the video, and of course, leaving a comment. Let's get this one started. So in case you missed it, I uploaded a video two days ago called Super Saiyan Skills. And in that video, I showcased the Artificer Hive and just how much damage output a player's skills could gain by using that hive. Well, today, I'm going to show you a beastly skill support build that is built around the Artificer Hive. And the idea here is that we are giving up some of our personal damage output to greatly increase the skill damage for the entire squad. And before I dive into this build guide, I would like to give a quick shout out to my subs who gave me the idea for this build guide. So to begin with, we are going to have to run with the Technician Specialization because that is the only way we can get access to the Artificer Hive. That being said, the Technician actually comes with many useful talents, like immunity to shock and disruption, extra skill damage, EMP grenades, extra damage versus skills, which the White Tusk use extensively, and of course, the Artificer Hive. Okay, now into the build, and I am using the Future Initiative Mask, along with Armor Regen as the attribute and an Armor on Kill mod. Don't worry, I'll explain the reasoning to go with this gear set and the armor on kill mods and the armor regen in just a moment. Much the same on the body armor as I went with on the mask. I'm again using future initiative with skill damage as the attribute and armor on kill as the mod. Now the reason I am going with future initiative on this gear piece is for the tactical superiority talent that increases ground control damage bonuses from 15% to 25%. The holster is my third piece of future initiative with skill damage as the attribute. For the backpack, and this is not the exact piece I would have liked to have used, but I am using one piece of Empress International with skill haste and skill damage attributes along with a skill haste mod. Now ideally, I would have preferred Wyvern for that extra skill damage, but this is what I had and I needed to recal to get the right talent. Opportunistic applies plus 10% amp damage, which is multiplicative to a target you hit with either a shotgun or a marksman rifle. And that amp damage applies to the entire squad and to all damage sources lasting for 5 seconds. The knee pads are my fourth and final piece of future initiative with skill damage as the attribute. And finally onto the gloves, and for this build I'm using the exotic BTSU gloves with skill haste and repair skills. And these gloves can really enhance this build concept thanks to the transference overclock talent. Now for each skill tier I have, which on this build is 6, it grants plus 15% hive skill haste. Detonating a hive refreshes your skill cooldowns and grants overcharge for 15 seconds. If at skill tier 6, this overcharge effect also applies to all allies. So, by alternating between the actual Artificer Hive for the buffs it applies and then detonating the Hive just before it runs out of charges, I can put my squad mates up onto overcharge for 15 seconds, which also applies to me and will therefore refresh all my Artificer Hive charges insanely fast and then I can redeploy the Hive and go right back to work. Now, if you are really paying attention, you should be able to keep the squad either buffed with charges or on overcharge in a chaining effect until the combat has completed. Now, for this build, my primary weapon is a shotgun, and what better weapon to use than the exotic Scorpio shoddy? This weapon is available on the normal reward track for Season 4 at rank 55, and is ideal for this skill support build. Septic Shock is an insane weapon talent, especially at the 6 and 7 stack bonuses of Shock status effect and then that plus 20% additional damage from all sources. Now, Since I am using Opportunistic, I need to either use a shotgun or marksman rifle to apply the plus 10% amp damage marks. So I try to get in close with the Scorpio and blind fire over cover to apply all those status effects from the weapon and then the amp damage marks for Opportunistic. You could use whatever you really want as the secondary weapon, and I have chosen to go with the mechanical animal simply for the future perfection weapon talent. 
having a little extra chance to get onto overcharge outside of the BTSU gloves is never a bad thing. The TDI card custom pistol is really not a bad choice for this build. InSync is really easy to proc, and since my turret stays up in damaging targets, both my skills and this weapon receive that plus 30% buff. Now onto the skills, and first up is the Artificer Hive, which I have paired with a Healing Mod, Health Mod, and Technician Specific plus 10% Range Mod, although both the Healing and Health Mod seem to have zero effect on this Hive. For my actual skill that I am using to damage with, I chose the Assault Turret with Health, Damage, and Duration Mods. So here's the basic idea behind the build, and more specifically, the reasoning for using Future Initiative. The two-piece bonus for this gear set grants plus 30% repair skills, while the three-piece is plus 15% skill haste and plus 30% skill duration. Now, all three of these bonuses provide utility to the build, but it is the four-piece bonus that makes it truly shine as we unlock the ground control talent, which increases you and your ally's total weapon and skill damage by plus 15% when at full armor. When you repair an ally, you and all allies within 5 meters of you are also repaired for 60% of that amount. And remember, the extra talent on the body armor boosts that plus 15% up to plus 25% skill and weapon damage as long as I can stay at full armor. Hopefully now you see why I'm going with several armor on kill mods, and I even rolled one of my skill damage attributes to armor regen as I wanted a little extra cushion. Now FYI, for every skill damage attribute you replace with an armor regen attribute, you're going to lose about 6% damage output from the turret, so you'll be able to adjust and tinker with this build to make it work exactly for you. Also, before you comment about the lack of skill haste mods on my build, I want you to think about how skills work currently in the live game, and that you can pick them up instead of detonating them. With that, I don't need to invest totally into haste mods, as I can now pick up both the turret and hive once combat is over, greatly shortening cooldowns. Since skill builds are really popular right now in Title Update 12, by using this support build, I can boost my entire squad's damage output and resiliency with the Artificer Hive buffs, body armor plus 25% skill and weapon damage, plus 10% amp damage to targets from all sources by using opportunistic, apply all sorts of status effects and extra damage to targets with the Scorpio, and throw the entire squad up onto overcharge when I detonate the hive while using the BTSU gloves. Before I conclude this build guide, I would like to thank my squad mates, Lady Detritus, Major Hillbilly, and Kappa167 for helping me record this legendary stronghold footage. As always, I look forward to reading your feedback in the comments section below. In case you haven't yet done so, please smash that sub button and destroy the bell icon to never miss another upload notification from my YouTube channel. If you liked the video, rate it with a thumbs up, if not with a thumbs down. Links to support my content creation outside of YouTube include Patreon and Teespring, both of those links in the video description below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts concerning most things gaming related. And until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.